Okay, great. Well, I want to welcome you. I'm Rachel Buckman. I am Safaria's Senior Education Associate. And um, in a second, oh, we have somebody else. That's wonderful. Um, Um, in a second, also that we have, yeah, we have Lauren Berman with us, who is um, Safaria's Outreach and Engagement Associate, and he's going to be helping out um, as we as we go along. And I'm so glad that we have a little bit bigger of a group now. So this is great. Um, if you want to put in the chat where you're where you are, that would be interesting. I'm actually in Jerusalem. Um, if anybody else wants to write in the chat where they are watching from, um, it'd be interesting to know. Um, also, as we go along, um, we are a small group. So I will be taking, um, I will be making stops along the way um, for questions. But if you want to also write them in the chat so you don't forget, um, that'll be great too as we go along. Um, and if I'm going too quickly, you'll slow me down. And also, um, I'm going to show you a little bit later on. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit later on where we have help sheets right on the site to help you because I'm going to show you a lot of things, and it usually goes by very quickly. And then when you sit in front of the computer your, yourself, I know when I learn new things, it um, I then forget everything that I saw. So we have help sheets on the site, and we also have a help email, which is hello at safaria.org, which is all on your sheet that we that the link is in the chat. And, um, and you can always write us with questions that you have, things that you need explained again, um, all, all of that is available for you. Um, so just to introduce Safaria very briefly, I assume most of you know about Safaria, but I have a few fun facts to share today. So we are building at Safaria an extensive library of Jewish texts and the tools to go with it. And in the last year, we've seen the largest number of um, unique learners, which is 4 million unique learners over the year on the apps, the website together. Um, every year it's growing and that's to me an incredible number. I've been with Safaria for five years. It's incredible to see 4 million unique learners around the world who are learning on Safaria and almost 80,000 new sheets were created just last year. So our, that grows our library, new texts have been added, new translations have been added. And I wanna make sure today that, um, that I show you how to use it to, to the best of, uh, of what it can do. Um, you might've been using Safari and not know all of the different things that we have to offer. And so that's what I'm here to show you. Um, Today's is, is the 101 next Sunday. I won't be able to show you everything because now that we've built so many things into the site, it takes more than one, one session to, to see it all. So next week at the, at the same time, uh, well, it depends. For me, it's a different time next week, but it's 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, um, whatever that figures out for you in your time zones. Um, and next week is the second part, which is the deep dive. And that information will be in the chat and Lauren just put it there. And it's also on the sheets. So we want you to be hooked into everything. Um, I wanna mention also that I'm gonna show you source sheets, talk a little bit about them, but we are not gonna be talking about how to make them. That's a whole separate um, webinar, which we are uh, currently scheduling our next one. So wherever you found out about this, you'll find out about that. And um, there's gonna be a lot new with Sheets. So you might wanna to come to that um, next time. Today, we're gonna to be looking at three big questions. The first is how do I find a text? Second is how do I learn about the text that I have found? And three is how do I go deeper into the text? Um, and that will be our focus um, for today. So the first thing I wanna do is knock out four quick ways that you can find a text. So I'm gonna share my screen and now I'm not gonna see you anymore, um, but you can write in the chat. Lauren will be keeping an eye on that as well. Um, and that's probably not so pretty. How about, how about this? And here we are, I'm gonna minimize all of you. So I'm not gonna see you. Um, 
And here we are at the Safaria website. So I want to find a text quickly. So let's start with the case where I know exactly what text I want. So let's say I want Pirkei Avot. I want the first Mishnah in Pirkei Avot. Um, I'm going to type it in. I can type it in English, Pirkei Avot, like this. Um, and I could type it, um, let's say I knew it as ethics of our fathers. That's another way it's often translated. I could type that in. I could type it in Hebrew. If I have Hebrew on my computer, I can type it in Hebrew. Um, if I don't have Hebrew, key, a Hebrew keyboard, always in the search bar over on the right, we have a Hebrew keyboard and I could click away on that. But let's go back to saying that I'm going to do Pirkei vote. And I want to do um, chapter one, Mishnah one. And um, let's see, Lauren, can you let people in? Uh, or do I have to hang on one second? Um, oh, I think everybody's, everybody's everybody's here. That was me. Okay. okay, sorry. Okay, I just don't want to leave anybody hanging in a waiting room. Okay, so here we are we got right away to the first chapter, the first mission of Pure Cavote. And I did that by typing in the search bar. I can do that with anything. And you notice that when I started typing in, I had a drop down menu. I could click right on there. If it has a book in front of it, it means that's taking me to the book. Um, if it has a hashtag that takes me to a topic page, which we're gonna talk about later. And these are collections of sheets, which we can talk about also later. Um, but it, it will also show me different spellings and it'll prompt me to kind of get to where I want to go. So that's the number one way. Easy, just search in the search bar when I know exactly what I want. Second way is if you look on the top, we have our Safari logo and then we have texts, topics, community and donate. And we'll talk about all of those. Let's start with texts. Text takes us, this is called the library page. We have all of our categories. Um, also, I want to note at the end, I will mention our donation opportunities. So this is one of them, which is to donate um, the learning for the day. And this is what it looks like. It goes on the um, it goes on the library page. But we have all of our categories, Tanakh, Mishnah, Talmud, Midrash, lots and lots of categories, all of them. So let's say I would like to find um, a Haggadah because Pesach is coming up, Purim just was over. So that's liturgy. And if I don't know what these categories are, we've recently added all of these descriptions of the categories. So I'm gonna click on liturgy and I'm gonna see first I have the Sidurim and then I have Haggadahs. So I have an Ashkenaz Haggadah, I have an Edot Mizrach Haggadah. I'm gonna click on the Ashkenaz one and I'm gonna open it and I go right to the, to the table of contents um, and all kinds of information. Um, that we're going to be talking about later. We'll be talking about this table of contents page a little bit later, but um, this is how we got to it. And then I can go to any part of the Haggadah that I want on the table of contents. So that's the second way. Again, it's on the text page and I would pick whatever category it's in. And then from there, for instance, here's another, here's for Tanakh and we have the Torah and we have the prophets. And I can just you know, open any of them up and then we have commentaries. So um, it goes by category, that's the second way. The third way is some people learn with um, certain learning schedules and all of us probably are pretty familiar with a, a weekly Torah portion. So if I wanna to go to this week's Torah portion, it's over here in learning schedules. That's one of the many learning schedules we have. And if I clicked on it, it will take me to that week's um, Torah portion, it'll take me to that week's half Torah. It'll take me to the, if people are learning a page of Talmud a day, it will, on the Dafyomi schedule, it'll go to that. And then below it, a little bit small, it says all learning schedules. So if I click on that, now it takes me to a whole page that's just learning schedules. So again, we have the Parsha, we have the, um, the Dafyomi, the Talmud, we have, this is the 929 cycle, which is a, a chapter of Tanakh, um, a day or five out of the five out of the seven days, all of these. And I have to say that learning, working at Safari, I've learned that there are more learning schedules than you could imagine. And, and we have some of the more popular ones on. So I'm gonna open here 
Um, I'm going to open the Parsha this week. It's this week. It's Shmini, and um, and that's a way to go very very quickly to what I'm looking for. Um, and my fourth way. So again, the first way was type it in the search bar. The second way was through the text button where I put in. Uh, I went through the categories, and the third way was on the learning schedules. And the fourth way is is when I don't really know what I'm looking for. So far, I've known exactly what I wanted. I want this week's Torah reading. I want a Haggadah. I want a certain text. But what if I don't know what I want? Um, so then we have something called topics. And that's this button over here. Or I can also, um, I can do it that way. Or I could also type a topic um, into the search bar. So here are some topics I could explore if I really don't know, I'm just like, I'd like to learn something today. I'd like to learn about, um, let's see, whatever values there are. Maybe there's a value I'm interested in. So maybe I'm interested in friendship. So I'm going to click on friendship and it's going to give me what we call a topic page. So first it's going to give me sources that have to do with friendship from all over the library. And it gives me source sheets that have to do with friendship. Um, another way that you can do it is I can type it into the search bar. So let's say I wanna do Passover. I wanna know what are some of the main texts of Passover. I type it in here and a hashtag indicates a topics page. So I'm gonna click on the Passover topics page and it gives me a little bit of a blurb about what Passover is, some, some topics that's more important to have than others. Um, sources, it's gonna give me, these are popular sources. These, are, these come from source sheets that people have made on the topic of Passover and from some encyclopedias that we have used to kind of come up with the core texts. They will first do it by relevance, meaning the ones that come up more often you also can filter it on the side chronologically. So I would start with biblical, um, biblical sources and, um, and then go later. I also have a second search bar. So let's say I want Passover and I want Seder. I can type that in. And now I have sources that are talking about Passover and Seder, or I might be interested in just the Mishnah sources. I can type in Mishnah. And now it's going to give me only sources in the Mishnah, Mishnah that are about Passover. So, um, oh, and I wasn't even going to show you this now, but I got carried away. Okay, so let's go back to the topics and I'll show you more of that later on after I give you time to ask some questions. I can explore by topic here and I can go to all topics A to Z. We have thousands of topics. So um, I can look through and see whatever topics, if you have a little time on your hands, you can find something interesting and, um, and, uh, and, and do it that way. And on the side of the topics page, again, this is topics from clicking on the top, we have trending topics. Now you can tell that it's just after um, Purim. So those have been the most clicked on topics. And I would imagine by next week already, you're going to start seeing the trending topics are going to be Passover related. But right now it's Purim, Scroll of Esther. That was the, the Parsha last week, the, the Torah reading, um, prayer and Esther. So it's definitely very Purim related. Um, so that's also if you're just kind of looking at like, well, what are look, people looking at now? What are people interested in? Um, that is where you can find that in the trending topics. So now we've had our four quick ways, typing it in the search bar going through texts and going through the categories, doing learning schedules or topics pages. So I'm gonna stop my share for a second because we're a small group. If you'd like to ask a question, um, I'm fine with um, short, short questions so we can jump back in. We're good? Okay, okay, we're gonna keep going. Great, so we are gonna go back to the, I'll share again. Um, if a question comes up, you can put it in the chat or you can um, ask at the next stop. So let's go back to that Passover, uh, which we could do it by holidays 
or we could type it in, um, but we'll go this way, Passover, and we're at the Passover. So I already showed you some, I showed you the sources and that they are uh, first by relevance, the ones that are popping up on source sheets the most often. So, you know, it kind of makes sense that these would be, um, you know, here's about not eating leavened, anything with leavened in it, you know, so eating matzah. And here's also about the Passover in Egypt. And, um, and here's something from Psalms. And these are all Torah texts. And then um, as I go further down, here um, in Mishnah, because the Haggadah is based on the Mishnah. So here's all the things about the Seder. Um, and so you could keep going and you could see really what are the basic texts of uh, for Passover. And then, as I mentioned, you can also filter it by chronological. Now, I mean, it's interesting because um, the story of, of Passover starts in Exodus and yet, Genesis is the earliest one. So this isn't probably as common of, uh, of a text because we didn't do it by relevance, we did it by chronological. And um, if I wanna know like why, how did that get on there? Um, you can see the three dots on the side. If I hover over it, it said this source is connected to Passover by sheets by Safari users. So when I look at it, I see that, um, because in the Haggadah, it talks about this, which happened before the Exodus, and that's why it's there. So a lot of people maybe put it on their sheets. Sometimes you'll hit something and you really don't know why it's there, and, and that can happen. Um, so we've done it by relevance, by chronological. I can have a second search topic over here. Um, so um, also we have... Um, we also have, oh, also another thing is, let's say I have this text and I would like to save it. I'm looking through and I, I see some, but I want to come back to them. I'd like to save them. So if I have a, a free Safari account, which we'll talk about at the end, and I'm logged in, I can use the bookmarks feature. So you see here on the top right, there's next to those little dots, there's a bookmark. Um, and when I hover on it, it tells me what I'm saving and it shows me that I'm saving exactly what this text is, because here it says it's 16, Deuteronomy 16, 3 to 12, and I hover over it, it says saving Deuteronomy 16, 3 to 12. So I click on it, and now I have saved it. You can tell because it's colored in. And, um, and then I have to move my things that are covering it. Um, ah, no, over here on the side, over here on the side, I have uh, uh, next to the search bar, I have bookmarks. And if I, um, if, I click on, if I click on the bookmarks, it's gonna show me my saved, uh, let me actually, let's try that. Because it didn't save it. Hang on one second. But this would be my list of saved, of saved texts. Um, let's try that again though, because it does not look like it saved it. Okay, and when that happens, when you're doing something, and if it happens that it doesn't work as anticipated, then you can write to us at hello at safaria.org and tell us what happened, and we will look into it. So it should be saved, and I should be finding it here. Let's try it one more time. If not, I'm going to write myself. Hmm. We also have history if you're logged in, and that also doesn't seem okay. So. Um, this is what would usually work. And this is why sometimes you have to write to us at hello at safaria.org. Okay, so you can save them for later. And we also have on the side related topics. So this is when we talked about Passover, you have other things that you might be interested in. You can, these each have their own um, topic sheet and you can just keep going and going and going and go further and deeper, um, which is great of a lot of discovery. If I click on sheets, now I see the sheets that um, are tagged Passover. These are the Passover sheets. Um, they start with the ones, the default is the ones that have been viewed the most. If I click on filter, um, oh no, they start with relevance and then they go with views. So here I have the ones that have been viewed the most. 
Um, sometimes I'm interested in the newest ones because they won't go to the top of the list because if they're new, they can't possibly have as many views as sheets that have been on our site for five years. Um, but but it's newer, so they might you know people have started to make perhaps uh, you know it might be more relevant to our times, or it also people have started to make um, more sophisticated sheets. So I can also. Um, find them this way and I can click on anything. I also could put a second search topic. So again, if I want Passover, but I really want Seder sheets, um, I can click that and then I get the newest Passover Seder sheets. Um, another thing is I also can put for a topic, I could put an author. So let's say I put Rashi um, and when it drops down, it is a quill. If the person is an author, it can be somebody ancient like Rashi. It could be, it could be somebody right now like Aviva Zornberg or um, uh, anybody recent. If it has a quill, that is an author, but it basically is a, is a topics page. And so it will tell you about the person. Here's Rashi, it tells you about, there's always a, a little paragraph about the person. Um, the difference with a topic sheet, also with a, a author sheet is it will give you the links to all of the works that are in the Safari library written by that person. So it's not everything that, that the person has written, but everything that's on Safari and it's linked, you could jump right there. Um, also some of the famous, most well-known, they've been put on people's sheets of quotes from that, of that person's writing. Um, it'll tell you when the person lived. Um, you can find out more about the person on Wikipedia, in the Jewish encyclopedia, and some of them have links to the National Library of Israel. Um, those look really nice. Those I'll show you this Rashi page from the National Library, uh, which will give a lot of information. So if you wanna learn more about authors, um, obviously not everybody has a page like this, um, you can see scans of books, you can see manuscripts. Again, you could spend a lot of time having fun learning new things. Um, sometimes we have related people, children-in-law, grandchildren, students, um, all kinds of information. Um, so that is finding texts through our topics pages, finding things to learn, finding information um, in our library. So I will stop again to see if there are questions. Is this all, uh, you can also tell me like, you know all of this, you want me to get to the new stuff? Okay, we're gonna keep going. I just wanted going. to say just how impressive all this is. <laughs> That's the good part of Lauren and my job is we don't make any of this, but we get to show it off and it is amazing and um, we love it. So I'm glad that that's, uh, we feel that way. Yes. Uh, so I watching this now makes me think that I should get on and do this for the synagogue and just introduce people who are interested. And I've been wanting to do it for a while and watching you. Um, so if you have an agenda that you use for basic interest, because most people don't, I mean, I don't know, but most people don't go into um, reading Rashi or reading the Doff on their own, but if they could, then they would. So um, any that's an encouraging, encouragement to me to do this. Well, we also, you can also talk to us about seeing if one of us, if you want, you know, one of us to, to um, do a training with your congregation, if you have a, you know, a nice size group. <laughs> Very small. <laughs> Very small. Okay, well, you can, you know, write to, to us at hello at safaria.org and we can talk about it and get you what you need. Good, thanks. Happy to do it. Okay, so now, um, so now that we've found our texts, now we're going to our second um, part, which is how do I learn about the text that I'm reading? So this is something that's really, really important to us at Safaria because we're all about transparency. We have a lot of different texts and we want you to know what it is that you're looking at. Um, and also we want you, one of the wonderful things about having it online like this, having it digitized, is that you, you get a lot of control. How do you want to view it? Um, when you buy a book, the publisher has decided how you view it. But, but um, because it's on, online, on your computer, you decide. And even when you're 
with a synagogue group where you know you have people that you're learning with, each one of you can decide how you want to view the text. You don't all have to decide the same way. So um, let's start with, um, I'm gonna be showing off some of our, our Pesach things. Um, so let's start with um, a one of our, we have about 11 Passover Haggadah commentaries that have been translated um, and in a volunteer manner of a, a very nice um, fan of Safaria, Rabbi Mark Greenspan, who has translated um, 11 different um, commentaries. So if you go down, we're in Haggadah, um, there's the two Haggadot that we have, and then we have commentary. And all of these, he has translated, I think all of them, maybe not, this looks like more than 11, but 11 of them, I think he has. And um, so we're gonna go to the Ephod Bad. Now, if you're like me, you never even heard of this before. Um, so we wanna make sure that you know, well, what is this? Um, so this is the table of contents page. So I clicked on the Ephod Bad on the, Pesach, on the Pesach Haggadah. And over here, it tells me about the text. It tells me the author. And um, you can see that it's, you know, every time it turns into my hand, that means there's a hyperlink, not my hand, the hand. Um, so if I click on Benjamin David Rabinowitz, I will go to his author page and um, it will tell me, I guess I'll do that. So it tells me about him a little bit. Um, when he lived, well, no, he didn't. <laughs> okay, sometimes you get little surprises. Okay, this is when he composed it. So I assume that he lived in those years and some more. Um, and it tells you again a little bit about him and, um, and I can navigate through here. Um, so uh, let's, so I was reading this before, so I'm just clicking on the continue reading and now I'm in the Magid section. And if you notice here, there is no English. So, um, this is the magic button over in the top right, the A Aleph button. It has lots of things where I get to decide. Um, oh, that's interesting. Um, I get to decide what I want to see. So um, if I want a bilingual text, A Aleph. If I want just the Hebrew, I click on the Aleph. If I want just the English, there we go. I click the A. Now, this is only if we have an English translation and we do not have an English translation of everything. So if you click on the A, or the A Aleph, and you only see, and you only see the Hebrew, and you don't see the English. That means that we don't have an English translation, and so it is only going to show you the Hebrew. It's not translating when it does this. It's just showing you. It's putting together another version that we have. Um, if you notice this one, so here, this is a great example because there's a big chunk of Hebrew text, and then the English is on the bottom. Sometimes, like if I'm reading. Torah, where the verses are smaller, you have a little bit of Hebrew, you have a little bit of English, I might want it one above the other. Here, it's, it's pretty difficult if I want to see both of them. So again, my A Aleph button, I can choose the layout that I want. Um, so I could have them side by side, or I could switch it. I like maybe I like it side by side like that. So for every text, you can choose however you want to see it, whatever makes sense, whatever makes you happy. Um, that's what we want you to do. If you want to adjust the font, I recommend that you do it on the AL button because it will keep everything within the frame of the page. If you just do it, um, let's say I just do it like making it bigger on my computer like that, then it's going to go outside of the, you know, it's going to be hard to read. But if I do it on the AL button and keep clicking Aleph, Aleph, making it bigger, 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 it's staying, as you notice it's staying within the framework of the page. So this is the better way to make the, the font the size that you want. Um, on, on Torah texts, you have even more options of what you want um, to see in the A Aleph because some texts have, um, well, actually I'll show you. Um, so like in, in the Torah, we have, um, we have more options. So we have also, you can have the aliot on or off. So you can have it indicate the aliot. Um, 
and you have three different ways of vocalizing the text. You could have just the letters themselves, you could have the letters with the vowels, or you could have the letters, vowels, and the trope, the cantillation. Some people, if they're not Torah readers and they don't know the tropes, they find it to be um, distracting. So here, as I have it now, it's with the tropes, but if I do it again, now I just have the, the vowels. So obviously that's just a thing where you have cantillation. So, um, so that's in the Torah text and not in the, um, that's not in our, what we were looking at before. Okay, let's go back. Um, so again, I can, I can navigate through the table of contents or I can pick up where I was before. Um, if I've never opened that text, it'll say start reading. If I have been in the text, it'll say continue reading. Um, so another part um, that's important, if I click on the text, I open the resource panel. And this is, we're gonna be moving into the resource panel in a minute. This is where all the real goodies are. The top three, they've, they've, we've moved them recently to the top of the page. We have about this text. This gives you that information that we had before about the author, about who the author was, a little bit about the, the book. It tells me about the version that I'm reading. So this is the version. It tells me where I got it and the license. We'll talk about this more in the deep dive about the license and how we use texts and reuse them. The translation is by Rabbi Mark Greenspan, who I mentioned, and, um, and then it has a different license there. And so it tells us what it is, who wrote it, um, and actually you even notice that Mark Greenspan as a translator, he also, because it's hyperlinked, you can see because my, my cursor changed from an arrow to a hand, um, it'll tell you a little bit about him because he has added uh, many translations of Haggadah um, commentaries, which is wonderful, um, and the license. Um, the other thing I want to point out, this is brand new. We just have some new, we added some new um, Torah commentaries. And with that, we added a new feature. So if I go to the Torah, to open up the Torah, let's open up the first chapter. Um, and um, now you can tell which translation you're looking at on the top. So this is the Korain Jerusalem Bible. The, the new, um, I'm going to put it bilingual. The new um, default translation is not that one, but that's, that's what's up there right now. And um, so about this text, the table of contents, that takes me so I can navigate here. I can navigate through the table of contents. And also for Torah, I can navigate through the Torah portion. And um, it will show me, so it's showing me I don't know why it's showing me too, but it's showing me that right now the parsha that I'm in is Lechacha, and it's either the second or the third. Um, no, that's the first. Okay, so it'll tell me, if you can see what's in bold, so we're now in the fifth Aliyah of Chaye Sarah, and um, so it'll show me where I'm, where I'm at, or if I want to just open it up by that. So that is the table of contents. And translations, this is really important. We have now 10 English translations of the Torah. So the contemporary Torah JPS is our new default. And, um, and this is what it looks like. And this is, um, I, you might've seen some of our press release on this. This is a gender sensitive um, translation. Um, we also have our other new one is Everett Fox's Five Books of Moses printed by, published by Shaken Books. Um, and you can, um, you can switch to that one. And the new part, and the other ones are ones that we already had, um, the Tanakh, the JPS 1985, the Rashi Chumash. So it's, it's translated with, uh, well, it tells you what it is, so better than I do. Um, the 1917 JPS, that, that Korean one. Um, and you can choose. And the new part is whatever you choose in one book of Torah sticks for all of them. So right now you notice I'm in the Everett Fox one, I'm in Genesis, but now if I go to numbers and I open something up, I'm still in the Everett Fox. So if I, you always can change it though. Let's say I wanna change it to the contemporary Torah. Now I'm in that and now I wanna to go to Deuteronomy 
and I'm going to still be, I'm now going to be in whatever I changed it to, whatever my last thing was. It, it will stick for all of them. So if I always want to see a certain translation, it will, it will stick. Um, so, and along with setting translations, we have also something new. This is helpful, um, if, especially if you're not um, always looking for English translations, if you're, if you're looking for other languages. So um, this is the profile button in the top right. It will either have your initials, it'll have, or an image. Usually people put a face since this is our Safari education account. Um, we didn't put a face, we put a, our, our logo. Um, but if I go to my account settings, this is something new. You can choose all kinds of different things, what language you want the site to be in, but this is preferred translation language. So if I want to choose German, um, I can do that. And then I will, I'm going to save it. And now when I go to the Torah, um, because we do have uh, we do have a German translation of the Torah. It's going to give me that as my first, uh, it's going to automatically give me that instead of the English. Let's see it. Well, we're having a buggy day, but that actually is the idea. Um, now let's see why that didn't, uh, Hmm. Okay, let's try that again. It says it saved it. We're going to try it one more time. I should be taking notes. Um, one more time. Let's go to Talmud because we have also a German translation of Talmud. Yep, there we go. Yay. So instead of giving me the English, now I have mindset usually for English. It would give me the English, but if, if I want, if we have a, another language um, available, it will open that for me. And if we don't have it, let's go to something where we don't have German. So we don't have, uh, let's find something that we have in English. I probably picked a bad section. Um, let's pick um, Midrash. Let's pick Midrash Rabba, where we have our new Esther Rabba, but we do not have that in German. So now it's going to give it to me in English. But any place where we do have German, it will give that to me. So that is something that you can do. Okay, I'm going to take a, another break, and then we're going to go deeper into, we have one more section where we're going to go deep into the text. We good? Okay, going back in. Okay. So now we found the text, we learned about the text, we made it look the way we want it to look. And again, you can change depending on the text, depending on your mood, however you would like it to lay out for you. And now I wanna go deeper into the text because this is really where the magic of Safaria is. And that is that once you digitize it, things can be linked together. and with a click of the mouse, you can go deeper and deeper into the text. So we're gonna start with this week's Torah portion, which is Shmini. And here we're in the learning section schedules on the side, and I'm gonna click on it. And it's gonna take me to the Torah portion. And, um, and then I'm gonna click on the text to open the resource panel. And on the side, it says commentary, and it shows me that on this very first verse, we have 81 comments on this verse. From all of the commentators that we have, they have 81 things to say. And there's an EN on the side, so we know that some of them, not necessarily all of them, certainly not all of them, are in English. If you're looking, um, if you only want things that are in English translation, um, like here, our four Kabbalah connections, none of them are translated because there is no EN on the side. So um, I'm going to click on. Um, commentary. And now I have our whole list. This is all of the commentators that we have on the site, which is a whole lot of them. You'll notice that some of them are in, in regular black um, uh, type and some are gray. Gray indicates that we have that book, we have that commentary, but that commentator had nothing to say on this verse. 
Um, if it's in black, it means that that commentator did. And in the parentheses is how many comments. So here, um, Rabbi Nubachia had two comments and um, Pene David just had one. Rashi on this one. Um, so we have on the top, we have um, Rashi and the top four, Rashi, Ibn Ezra, Ramban and Sforno, those are the most popular commentaries. Those are on the top. And actually we have full English translations of all four of them. The reason there's no EN here is because they didn't have any comment here. And then below Sforno, then they're alphabetical. So if I click on Rashi, he had two things to say, and I'm gonna look on his first one. So here it is in, it's not in full, it's just I can read it and sort of see what he said. I have a choice of English or Hebrew, and I'm clicking it up on the top, but I don't have the full A Aleph because I don't have it in full, but I can open it underneath, it says open. And now it's in full side by side. Now I can decide how I wanna look at it. I want to put it, let's say I want to put Rashi this way. I happen to like everybody that way. Okay. Um, so now I have the Rashi in full and I can read Rashi's comment. And I know it's in full because I have a full A Aleph uh, menu there where I can do everything that I want. Um, and then if I click on Rashi, now I get a new resource panel and now I get everything that's connected to this Rashi. So there are commentaries on the commentary. It's called a super commentary. So if I click, click on commentary, now I see all of the people who commented on Rashi. Now only one of them is translated into English. Um, and I can um, also see any of these um, places where that's the commentaries, but I also have, um, like he quotes Midrash here. You can see Seder Olam, here it's going to be on the side, but I see it's not in English. But the Sifra, which he's um, right here, he, he quotes, uh, I can see it in full on the side. There it is, not in full, but I can still see it. And then I can, um, I can put it on the side. So now I have the original text, I have the Rashi, and then I have what Rashi quoted. And I can keep going and keep going. So on the side here, we have on every text, we have the commentaries. We have every place that the Talmud mentions this verse is right here. There's six places that the Talmud mentions that verse. Um, one is the Jerusalem Talmud, and these are other Talmudic works. And you can see that they are all translated, which is very nice. Um, Midrash uses this verse. Um, Targum, Kabbalah, Chassidut, Musar, reference, all the different places um, where it is. Um, so, so that is one way, that is how we go deeper and deeper and deeper into, um, into the text. I wanna show you something new. Um, this is not new, but I'm gonna show it to you. We have manuscripts on the side. We use the Leningrad Codex is our Hebrew text. You can read about what it is. And every page of the Tanakh, um, is linked to the page in the Leningrad Codex, um, which is, I believe, in Leningrad, and um, not so easy to go and see. And you can see it uh, like this, which is very cool. Our newest manuscript, I'm going to jump onto a different topic for a second. I'm going to go back to those Haggadahs because I really want to show you something very, very fun um, and can enhance, very much enhance. Um, your Seder. So the four children, we have just added manuscripts that are illustrated. And I love, we always do a thing at our Seder about the four children, um, the wise, the, the wicked, or however you want to translate it, the, the, the um, simple and the one who doesn't know how to ask. Um, and one of the interesting things is in, in Haggadahs that are often illustrated, it's interesting to see over time, history um, and places, what did those people at that time think represented wisdom? Who, who would be the wise child? Who would be the wicked child? So we have, look at here, 60 manuscripts. And you can click on, I'll uh, show you some of the, um, I mean, this, look at the dates on these from 1350, from 
I'm going to show you a famous one. Well, many of these are very famous. Uh, I must have passed it already. Um, sorry, I'm giving you a headache. Um, hmm. Okay, well, I'm not going to go looking for it too long, but um, So they're from all different places. So it's very, very interesting to see what did uh, people in those places think were, oh, uh, think uh, represented all of those. Wait a second. I, oh, it's further down. I was playing with these the other day. So you think that I know exactly where they are. Um, this one, this is very famous. This one's from Lodz, um, Poland. And um, so, you can make them bigger. Um, they come in in color, um, and then you can click on them and make them even bigger. But it's um, so you have the the wise child, and you have the this one was actually um, during the Holocaust, and you can see the the wicked is you know has his his Hitler mustache. Um, here's the simple and the one who doesn't know how to ask. Um, and each one of them, you know, you could really ask yourself, why do they look this way? Many of the older ones, pre-State of Israel, the um, wicked one is a soldier. But after the State of Israel, um, soldiers weren't, uh, they, they were Jewish soldiers. The other soldiers were, uh, were not. And so they were, you know, it's very interesting to see. And you could spend a lot of time on this and bring a lot of new insights to your Seder. Um, so I just wanted to show you that because... I just want to share. Excuse yes. me. Yeah. Can you make the, the, the Shik Haggadah a favorite? No, it's just connected as we don't have it actually on the site. We have the image of it um, is there, and we only have this part of it. So we only have the four sons and four children. Thanks. So no, you you so you you can't, but it's uh, yeah, it's amazing. Okay, so to go back to the Parsha and to go back to what we were looking at, the first, the first verse. Um, and so we talked about the things that are connected in our library. We talked about the commentaries and the other texts. So let's go to sheets. So now I'm interested maybe, well, what did anybody do with this? What did people write that they have to do with this? So on the side, you have all of the sheets that, are, that have used this verse. This verse is on all of these public sheets. Um, so, um, oh, oh, I was gonna go, oh, I know why it's not. I was gonna go show you something different. I was gonna show you from a different chapter. And um, so here we're talking, this is when we're getting to uh, the cash route. So about keeping kosher. So um, I was very excited about this when I was looking to find good sheets to show you because this is as a, a student of my husband's and a good friend who, who went, who did a thing with a good friend of ours. So I knew all the people on this sheet, but also I know that it's really good quality. So here, this was her source sheet um, that she used for a Torah, for something to teach to a group of people from the Davidson Foundation who actually are big supporters of Safaria and our Talmud is named for them. Um, and so here she just put together a bunch of sources and that's one way and she brought things from outside. And so you could study this and try to see what she was doing. And she put some key terms at the end that are helpful for learning about um, keeping kosher. So that's an example. I found some other ones that I just wanted to show you of different types of sheets. This is also based on the same thing. This one is Rabbi Creditor. And um, this is a new sheet that we just were lucky enough to get. And you can um, press this and you'll see a YouTube video of him giving this lesson. And you have um, more narrative where you can read it. And really, um, it's more of like a full lesson or like a Dvar Torah and the text. Um, one of the nice things is if you want, he, this only has a little bit of the text, you always can click on it and it will open on the side. You can see where it fits within like the context of it, if you ever want to do that. And um, so this is a wonderful sheet. And here's another one. Um, this is for, uh, for Passover, contemporary customs for the Seder. So you can get all kinds of ideas and um, 
You always can learn about who the person is if they wrote about themselves. You can click on, I don't know, I haven't clicked on this one. So I'm gonna, uh, she did not write anything about herself, but let's see if Rabbi Creditor did. Uh, well, a little bit. So you know that he's a rabbi in New York and, he had, and here's a link to the website. So you could learn, learn more. So if people give you more, you can learn more. So you can find all kinds of great stuff um, in Sheets and below it, is web pages, which Lauren could explain way in depth, but we're not actually going to because we're getting close to our end time. But um, the short part is that we have a piece of code that can go into people's websites that will link them to us and we can link them back. They, if you're on their website and they cite a verse, it can link to us and then we can link back to them and give you great great material. So if I click on web pages, you can see the numbers, all these different websites use our linker and we put them on ours. And I looked around to find something that would be interesting. So for instance, My Jewish Learning, which is a very, very nice um, basic site, gives you basic information. So this is going to be about keeping kosher. And I click on it and I go to their, this will take me to their website. And I can read about keeping kosher from my Jewish learning. And um, you'll also see what I mean about they link to us. So when they mention, um, they mention uh, a, a text, I could click on it and, and there it's gonna pop up. Um, they have choices how they want it to pop up. So that's up to them. Um, so we have that one. Here's another one just to show you. I'm just gonna show you a few Times of Israel blogs. Um, there was one I wanted to show you. Um, well, maybe it was on this one. It's called Parshat Shmini, are you really keeping kosher? But whatever, you can find all kinds of things that you're looking for. And these also belong to many different, um, ah, this one. This is also a well-known, rabbi who has interesting ideas. Um, and so here is his blog. And, um, and again, he's, it's linked to Safaria, but you can get there from, from ours. And I could just keep going. Another place to find interesting information, good things to read is the community page. So we've talked about texts, talked about topics, and then we have community. Community page, we have sort of curated some sheets. We always have something for the Torah portion. Um, we sometimes have something calendar uh, related and we've been stressing Shemitah because it's a Shemitah year. So this would take you to a sheet um, about Shemitah. We have something on rabbinic literature, on Talmud, um, and that's a sheet that we have gone through and thought that that might be something that would be interesting to people. And then often we have something that's sort of teaching about Safaria. So this is our tutorial sheet about the resource panel. Um, so this is another great place to find information. And then also it's going to, based on where you've clicked around, it might suggest people that you want to follow. If you follow them, it means that every time that they publish a new sheet, you will get an email to tell you, to inform you that they um, publish something. We also have collections um, that are people are, it's a group of sheets on a topic. And we have many, many of them here. You can see this is a new one. This is Rabbi Creditors. Um, he made a new collection. You can cl click on it. It gives you a little bit of a blurb about what it is and all of the sheets that are in the collection. Um, hopefully that's going to be, you know, people add to their collections. Um, if you wanted to, you could um, look for uh, we have Passover collections, all kinds of things. You can use the search function, the find on your computer also to find um, different things. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'll, I have only five minutes. So I do wanna show you unless you, I, I'll stay on after if you'd like, but I wanna show you um, the profile button. So this goes to your profile. And if you're logged in and you have an account and logged in, all that information is on the sheet. Um, and this is where you have all of the sheets that you have made. You can create a new sheet. You can have your collections. 
Um, you also, so why would you wanna have a, an account? So there's certain things, most things you can do without an account. There are a few things that you need to have an account. The biggest one is to create source sheets. You need to have an account to create a source sheet. You can track your learning with the Torah tracker, which is right over here. And it will show you um, what you're spending your time on Safari uh, learning. And that's kind of fun to see what you've done. It'll take a minute to also, because I'm on Zoom, it, it takes longer. Um, I can save texts and sheets. I can see my reading history. I can take um, some notes. I can do the Hevruta thing. All those things we'll talk about in the next. Um, and it seems like it's just being really slow because I, I think it's being on Zoom at the same time. Um, I also can, this is where, well, it's gonna come up soon, but I'm not gonna wait for it. This is also where I set my account settings. I can change my password if I want to there. I can change the language of the site. And it says help. This is a great place to know. These are our help sheets, our help. Um, so we have all kinds of, it's like FAQs, all kinds of things that, um, and we've tried to tell you a little bit what's gonna be on each sheet. Um, that's a great place to go for help as you are, um, as you're working through discovering things. Um, the last place on the top is our donate section. We are a nonprofit and we rely on foundations and um, individual donors. We have many options. We have a one-time donation. We have a sustainer, which is a monthly gift. We have the day sponsors, which I showed you. Um, you get to put your sponsorship on the top of the library page. And we also have a swag store. We just finished with a very successful um, Megillah mug that people enjoyed a lot. Um, and so we all have all kinds of great things that, um, that help us to support uh, the work that we're doing. So that was a lot of talking. Would anybody like to ask a question? Yes, please. Yeah, I have a couple questions because I couldn't get my, my picture up there. Um, you don't have the new altar um, translation. No, we don't. And um, we have, all of this has to do with access to, to um, you know, they, it's under copyright and we're very, very careful about copyright. We work with publishers. Um, that's where the donations come in to help us to make agreements with publishers that they will um, open up their, uh, we, don't, we don't own the copyrights, but they'll make it more accessible. And we're really proud that we have the two new ones that we have. We have the, the JPS and um, we have the, the contemporary JPS and we have the Fox, but we, we don't have the altar translation. I have a bunch of questions, but if other people want to ask, I don't want to hog the screen. Okay, I'll continue. Go ahead. Um, a comment. Yes. Uh, when you had like the Tanakh and you had the verses. Yes. And the, the print of the number, the font for the number of the verse is, is very weak. I have that in a lot of um, stuff on the, uh, even books that I have and also stuff on the internet. I find it very difficult to read the numbers. It's, it's not clear, like uh, you might think about that. Okay. Yes. Um, Thank you for, for commenting. And um, so I'm going to show, let, let's look. And um, yeah, I mean, we, we so you're no, saying no. because it's okay, a lighter either there spread. or if it's in the middle, if it's side by side. Okay, that's a little clearer. But when it's, they were side by side, it's, it's pretty uh -huh. hard to read it. For, okay, yeah. I'm older. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. No, we do hear that. And um, so, I mean, if the side by side is harder, you might want to, you know, harder to, on your eyes you might want to then find, you know, if this is easier um, to do that. And I mean, we, we definitely have heard that. Um, and um, our designer has wanted to keep it um, this way to make the text itself um, stick out. But um, we hear it and, and actually really welcome feedback when you write to hello at sparia.org. We keep track of all of those and we give the feedback to the designers and engineers, um, and um, all of it goes into, weighed into everything about uh, changes that we want to make, features that we want to do. We can't do everything, um, but hearing from people how you use it, what you would like to use 
is very, very helpful for us. So we, um, we welcome that. So, you know, write and, you know, you might not get exactly what you want, but, but it, you will be heard um, okay. uh, because we do keep track. Okay, I do have a, another simple question because I, I don't know some of the simple things. I'm looking at an iPad because my yes. computer doesn't work for Zoom. Um, how do I move the chat at, from the chat, the source page to, to email so I can uh, download it? Lauren, you wanna take that? I'm trying to think of. <laughs> so first of all, I wanna do point out that when you're on your iPad or you're on your phone, you're on the app and most things run the same, but there are some differences, which you probably noticed between the app and the thing. So you're saying that you clicked on the link to the sheet, you clicked on it. Um, and I didn't know what to do with it, how to get it so I can print. I, I can't, I don't know how to print from my iPad. Okay, so that's, but how can I move it to email so I can? Well, you could copy it the, you could copy the URL and paste it into your email, send it to yourself. All right. How's that, Lauren? Did I do okay? okay. Yeah, you and know, I, I think we are all uh, about the same. Perhaps in our, uh, I don't have a tablet myself. I'm very old school. I don't. I'm not a big app user myself. I I use my uh, my computer, my laptop, uh, and my phone from time to time. Uh, printing is not my expertise, uh, but I but yeah, I think that the the ability to to send a url just to yourself and open it up and basically see the same thing on your computer is probably the way to go if there's a way to print from your tablet uh i'm sure i imagine there is uh somebody's probably developed that uh then that that you know i would say check in with uh with some of the the folks who know how to do that uh but i am not that person right now but maybe i should learn Okay, and one last comment for those sure. of you in Israel know what was going on today. If you think when you read the Haggadah and it's B'nai Brak, B'nai Brak, you know, and you know, where is B'nai Brak and all this? Well, we've all been isolated in our homes today. I live in Ramat Gan and I'm two blocks from B'nai Brak. All the major uh, highways in the country oh. and uh, in uh, the Tel Aviv area have been blocked because there's a, a very important rabbi um, died and they expected something. I, I didn't look at news, but 600,000 or a million people would go to this funeral. And so we were all told, you know, not to go to well, work. I benefited from it because I live in Jerusalem and my son spent Shabbos with us and lives in Yafo. And he had to, he stayed an extra day. He's going back now because he, so I got an extra day to hang out with him. Uh, yeah. I mean, he was working, I was working, but, uh, but he was in my house. So, um, yes, but it is fun when all those things that come up in the Haggadah or in Tanakh or anything pop up and, um, you know, it relates to something that you see in the news or something that's, you know, that's around. Yes. So Thank you very much. Anyway, thank you so much for, for coming. And if you would like to, it's on the sheet, it's on, it's in the chat. Um, if you'd like to sign up, if you haven't already for next week's, I will see you um again so Ramat Gan will be at eight o'clock will be at eight o'clock next week <laughs> yeah. um but uh, the United States will be at one o'clock um still at the same time um and I don't actually know about Germany um so you'll have to figure it out um but I hope to see you and we'll go a little bit deeper see some of the other things that um I didn't have time to show you today. I hope that you enjoyed and learned something new about Safaria and play around, ask questions, look at the help sheets, write in if you have a question. Um, oh, and thank you, Lauren, for putting it back into the chat. So it's uh, the sign up sheet if you haven't already. And I want to wish everybody a really nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.